Good morning, afternoon, evening or night. Whenever you're watching this, welcome. This railway is the Worth Valley Railway, first opened to passengers in April 1867, closed to passengers on the 30th of December 1961 as a result of Dr Beeching's infamous and devastating report for reshaping of British railways, and then bought by a local preservation society who reopened it in 1968. Because of their enthusiasm and dedication, it has survived and thrived, not so much as a transport option between the three towns it joins, cars and buses having firmly supplanted it now, but as a tourist attraction, and occasionally a film set. It has featured in Pink Floyd's The Wall, The Great Train Robbery, Last of the Summer Wine, Peaky Blinders, Swallows and Amazons, and The Railway Children, and many more, but those are the famous ones. Anyway, Today my plan is to take a wander in the river, seeing what relics from history I can find, and doing a bit of litter picking along the way. It's been three long months of lockdown since I could come out wading, and I've missed it more than I ever thought I could. It is far more hit and miss than exploring bottle dumps, there's sometimes nothing much worth finding, but on a warm spring day, what could be better than messing about on the river? First find, and I've dropped it. Not bits buried itself in the silt. Hmm, bit of maybe a field drain, not sure. Tube anyway, no tapering. A brick and no, not seeing anything yet. The line has ten paid staff members and five hundred volunteers to run a track that's only fifteen miles long. Steam trains. They're dirty, but somehow still quite magnificent machines. There seems to be a few patches with glass and pottery pieces. This is probably early 20th century, 1900 to 1930. Too early yet to tell if these pieces are washing out of an old dump site. But I can safely say that if they are, it isn't a dump site that appears on old maps. Not very worn, so maybe hasn't come all that far. Looks like cast iron. Wow, not cast iron, lead. And that... I'm really not sure. Is it part of where two large pipes were joined together? If so, could be really quite old. But not a great start to the outing. It's a pollutant that I feel duty bound to remove, rather than actually liking to. And it's very heavy. Hmm, sewer or drain pipe. Very common. But over where I've put my bag, there is something uncommon. I don't think I've seen anything quite like it before. Copper wires wrapped around a tube, and the tube is... brass, I think, with a wrapping between it and the copper wires. And there's a netting over the end, maybe over both ends. Yes, so... It's perhaps reasonable to suppose that at one time it had copper wires all along the pipe, but the wrapping is gone and so are the wires. Interesting connectors. Can't see any remnants of secondary wires coming off them, but... Hmm. If there were no wires coming off it, what in the world could it have been for? There's obviously pieces of the puzzle missing, but does anyone recognise it? I 
I think I am going to take it, even though it's early in the expedition and it outweighs for lead. At least it does with all this river sand in it. Hopefully it'll be a lot lighter if I can wash that out. Getting there, the mesh came off one end easily and it's cleaning out well with a little help from the stream. That's the last of it. The netting I think is brass as well, rather than copper, which is very unusual. Don't often find anything made of brass wire. Always interesting, and sometimes a bit awe-inspiring, seeing how high the water level can get in flood. And this is one of the rarities in the area, in that it doesn't seem able to get higher than the built-up banks. I'm not sure if that's because there was extra height built so that the railway wouldn't get flooded, or if it's because it isn't all that far down in the catchment area, and there just can't be actual floods here. It's a placid little brook today, and a pleasure to wade here in dappled sunlight. A strip of metal. It's steel. A steel band, with quite a nice visual effect of the rust bubbling up beneath the paint. I'm going to take it. It might be good for some craft project or other. And if there's steel settling here, there's a chance there's other metal. Yes, it's not much, but every bit of copper has value. The monetary value rises and falls like any scrap metal. Currently it's very high, but that won't last, and I don't take it to sell it. I've done one forge melt so far, none of the things I tried worked out as well as I'd have liked, but I think that will be the next video regardless, the first faltering step on a long learning curve. A brick from Brig House, a small town about 12 miles distant from here, and half a carrot, nibbled by something. I've been told there are quite a lot of fish in this stream, haven't seen any yet, probably hiding from me. Do fish like carrots? I do know that some of them like peas. Hmm, garden puff edging, but quite a nice one really. Not sure I have any use for it, but I kinda like it, and might regret if I leave it. A bit of copper wire tangled up in some fishing line. Horrible stuff, bad for the wildlife. Poor little thing has taken a tumble into the river. I think it's still alive, so let's find a leaf for it, far enough away from the river that it won't just fall right back in. Moved slightly. I know some gardeners watching will disagree with saving a snail, but it's a valuable part of the biodiversity of this place. It's not gripping the leaf, so just make sure it's the right way up and in the shade and hopefully it will recover and live a life full of whatever happiness a snail can experience. I think a liking of sheds has been culturally instilled in me as a man of western civilization, and that is a big shed. Could store a lot of tools and things and do so much tinkering in a shed like that. That particular one is full of train carriages, and there's another shed of similar size beyond this one. I can see a few things that warrant closer inspection. First, have to put the bag down. And then, first thing is round. A partial piece of a base of a stoneware pot. Plain and fairly common. Second thing was some bare copper wire, which is roughly the same colour as the mud that I've stirred up, and is now hidden. Ah. There it is. Always a welcome find for me. And the third thing is green. Plastic, but vaguely interesting plastic. Possibly from a fisherman's gear? I don't know, but shouldn't it be in the river. There is, of course, a lot of iron in this stream. If it looks interesting, I'll take a closer look but it'd need to be smallish, restorable and interesting to get taken home today. Oh, 
upstream of that footing for an overhead pipe looks like just the sort of place the river would drop small metal things. Hey, as predicted, a little metal patch with a coin. I think that's a fairly modern 50 pence coin, still legal tender. Rather large cast iron drain pipe. Small but nice chunk of brass in this connector fitting. Iron bolt, quite old and corroded. Hmm, an S hook, no idea how old. Another partial bolt, though I think this one is steel. An old nail. Some steel wire, but wrapped in plastic. I'll take that home and bin it. A little piece of bare copper wire down here. And up higher, a string of small beads, I think. They're quite heavy for their size. Too small to be a rosary, too many to be fishing weights. I think they might be glass, and it might have once been a necklace. Another chunk of brass in the water. Oh, not much functionality left in it, and not a huge amount of age either. A plug hole. A welcome bit of metal that I won't feel bad about melting down. Colourful. Not plastic. At least not moving like plastic. Think it's silk. Oh no, that might mean there are clowns in the area, or children's party magicians. Neither are creatures I'd like to meet while out for a river walk. There are some creatures in here I would like to see. Soon after I started filming today, I met somebody who's involved in documenting the wildlife and plant life of this river system. He said there were kingfishers here. I've never seen one and would love to. Crayfish and brown trout too, otters somewhere downstream at a place I've filmed several times before. I've not seen their tracks, but I will be on the lookout for them next time I go there. Anyway, this seems to be an outflow channel from an old mill, not one that's currently still here, and location-wise, it might have once stood where the overflow car park from the rail yard currently stands. There's nothing obvious remaining. I'll have to do some research when I get home. Hmm, fallen tree blocking my way. Could go over it could go under it. I think I'm going to go around. Now I have that Michael Rosen song, we're going on a bear hunt, stuck in my head. We're going on a bear hunt, we're going to catch a big one, what a beautiful day, we're not scared. Uh oh, a river, a deep cold river. Can't go over it, can't go under it. Oh no, we've got to go through it. Splash, splosh, splash, splosh and several more verses which I never fully memorised. There's a piece of pottery I want to check out down there, a Lucozade bottle which I will take, and something that looks cylindrical down there, aluminium by the looks of it. But first, there is a tantalising shape ahead. Can you see it? It's a little baby axe, a hatchet. I've been hoping to find an axe head that I could try to restore. This one is not very old. Plastic handle, and maybe not the best possible thing to restore. I would ideally like to try making a handle out of wood, but I can at least practice restoring a corroded axe head to a sharp and useful tool. Nice warm sun, nice rock structures, nice bird song, nice place. And that was probably once quite a nice scooter. Plastic 
plastic and pottery. The artwork looks quite like a children's book illustration, but not something I can really do something with. And this roller, did it come out of a mill or a mangle? It's quite chunky, but I think a mangle is the more likely candidate. This over here, looking remarkably in one piece, is an unusual looking hook thing. I think probably its function was similar to a sash window hook, but it doesn't look all that similar. Any other ideas? I like it, particularly the patterns made by whatever it is that's starting to eat away the wood. I think it's probably a fungal thing. The actual outflow place is very overgrown and a bit grotty, so I won't go any further up this channel. This thing, do I put it somewhere that someone else will find it, or leave it to its inevitable demise? Hmm. I'll leave it here, and if someone can tell me what it actually is, that might change my mind on whether I take it home or not. A diffractor lens, possibly off a motorbike. I like these, and this one, I think, is an almost exact match for one Barbara Holzmark sent to me from Canada. Plastic. With a slug. How'd you get? Bit of a plastic flower pot. On the way back from grabbing my bag, which I'd left a ways downstream, I spotted something in the shallows. Not in a place that I would expect it to be, so perhaps it's newly washed out of somewhere upstream and hasn't yet reached a place where the river would drop its small metal things. A pretty cool find, really, the outer ring of a fob watch, perhaps once owned by someone travelling on this nearby railway. Although the proximity now is perhaps quite new, so more likely it was once thrown away and the dump site it was in has been dug or washed out. Still, I'm happy to find it, and it's not something destined for the milk pile. curly bit of wire. Lovely bit of privacy those flowers have gotten. No other plants competing for space or light. I hope the insects that pollinate them are still able to find them. There's a few bits of pottery and glass in here. Not sure what that is. Excuse me, little flower. Hmm, still not sure, but doesn't feel like it's particularly old. Not that feeling should be trusted over actual knowledge. An interesting sheep of iron. Oh, it's two pieces, and this bit, not interesting. But the other one looks like a tool. It is, but I'm not sure what tool it was. Was it, for instance, a garden hoe? A shovel with quite a lot broken off? Or a scraper of some sort? Just as easy to be a discarded gardening tool as a historical railway-related relic. Something like a Nerf football. Doc's chew toy, anyway. And looks like I'll have to get out for now. It's going to get too deep for my boots very soon. Well, I probably shouldn't have chosen this banking. It is railway land, and I doubt I'd be wanted here, but the temptation to film the carriages a bit was great. I have ridden on this railway about 20 years ago now. I'm not a dedicated fan of trains, but I do like them, and would certainly like to take a Grand Railroad trip one day. Older, less homogenous carriages are appealing in such daydreams. Short of the Orient Express, though, I think the older carriages are probably less comfortable to ride. I think there's actually a bit of a museum in one of these sheds now, but social distancing needs means it's not something I can explore today. That confirms it. Too deep. If I can't see the bottom in the sort of water visibility there is today, then it's at least waist high. I couldn't get down by walking along that ledge, 
without drawing the attention of a staff member, so I came around and down the hillside. There was another guy in the car park at the top of the hillside, and he said I'd put his mind at ease after I explained what it was I'm doing, with a slight emphasis on the litter pick portion. What is it about small rivers that's so attractive to hand tools? I rarely find them in old dump sites or woodlands, but very commonly in streams and rivers. This is a Stanley knife, not a bad tool, and I do have some blades suitable for it, so I'll take it and it can hang around in my craft room, occasionally being used when I can't find my preferred craft knife. Piece of a tile, quite nice, I like it. And over here, didn't think it was time for these yet, elf cup fungus, edible but not particularly tasty, and please do be very careful if you ever try foraging for mushrooms and fungus, so many poisonous look likes to edible ones. Do not use my videos as a guide. Nothing much to see on this stretch of beach, but it's a big lot of silk, looks kind of like the remains of an old style of parachute, perhaps there were parachute games in the park. Something odd under the water, it looks like stone, perhaps concrete, a tapered, almost triangular thing, which is probably the base, and a circular thing, probably the top. It's well wedged into the riverbed, so I'm not getting it out today, but it's certainly interesting. Any ideas? Little flower. It's buttery, the handle off a lid. I think I remember something similar from a crockery set my grandparents used to have. I like it. That looks just like a flower pot. It isn't, it can't be. I think instead it's a cap that would have gone over some joins in wires. I found a similar white ceramic one before, which looked more like an air cap off a tyre, and didn't have a hole in it that this one has. But that's still what I think this is. Could become, though, a miniature flower pot for a doll's house, perhaps. Some blue and white floral pattern. natural weir here, behind which there's a pool, too deep for boots. And either side of the river, there's tough scrambles with forms. Yay, fun. Past the first pool, faced with the second. It is prettier, but I'm still going to have to go back up the form-covered hillside again to pass it. It's public park on the right hand side, and private gardens on the left. The left hand side is currently much prettier. That little patch of red up there is the hat of a huge garden gnome. Now are those fragments of pottery, probably mostly drainage pipes, are they coming out of that pipe? Matters not, because I'm not going to follow the trail up into somebody's garden, and there's plenty of pottery coming down the main channel too. This beach. I've visited this beach a fair few times throughout lockdown, this park being approximately five miles from home and the midpoint of a few different walks. 
It shows signs of her being a local beachcomber here who gathers for fragments of pottery and glass and leaves for bits that she or he doesn't want. So I haven't found much of interest pottery-wise here, but whoever it is doesn't seem interested in copper, and I found a few bits here. Most of the scratch and dig marks are more probably dogs from the beachcomber. As we as go, that's a pretty one, the mill it served long since gone. This park is my intended exit point, but after a bit of a break and a long conversation with the same photographer I met earlier, I seem to have a bit more energy to go a bit further now. This will still be my exit point, but I'll leave my bag in the undergrowth ahead and travel light past a small and altogether grottier beach through a short tunnel that I've looked into and never ventured into because my 10 mile walks would have felt like 20 if I'd done them either wearing or carrying my Wellington boots. I do intend to do a separate video sometime, starting from this park and going even further up river, where there's a mill pond, a mill, and a nice old and overgrown graveyard. But I fancy seeing what I might encounter on the beginning stages of that outing now. Part of a tail light, I think, of a relatively old car. Not entirely sure how old this bridge is, because it's unnamed on any of the maps I can find, which date back as far as 1875, but I think it was probably built at the same time as the road, which was around 1755. They certainly don't build them like this anymore. Not that there's anything wrong with this tile, it stood up to traffic crossing it for a few hundred years, it just takes a lot of material to make something so solid, and something less chunky but better engineered will hold up just as well. It took approximately 50 times as long to traverse this tunnel as it would take me to cross the road above. First thing I find is brass. Not sure what it was, but I'd guess part of a fuel tank, and because of how narrow it is, I'm going to guess further and say it's maybe from an old style lawnmower. Feel free to correct me if you recognise it and I'm wrong. There's bricks and stones and not much else on this beach, at least not to my tired eyes. But when I come again, I'm going to bring a pinpointer and something to scratch beneath the surface because it feels like a place for river would drop metal. What a classically Victorian looking outflow tunnel, and the rocks are stained with rust. I will have to try to find out which mill that belonged to and how much of it remains. Nothing but Stygian gloom. I expect the other end is caved in. I will try to find out either before or during the next video.
Hmm, nothing much on the previous beach, but this one has lots of pottery and bricks and concrete and is seeming more and more like there is a dump somewhere upstream that's being washed out. Victorian floor tiles. I don't think I'll go any further today. It is looking like quite an interesting stretch of stream ahead though, before it loops back through a modern housing development where it's more constrained. There are plenty of things in the stream which suggest a dump site from the 1930s, possibly earlier. Like carbon core of an old battery. That's probably 1930s to 60s. The tiles I've seen are Victorian. The brass thing I found is maybe 50s, 60s. Don't want or need to carry out the soil currently stuck in it. Just spotted this, a roller from something. Mangle size again, but also possibly from a mill. Very corroded and very stuck in there. Ooh, some picture. Didn't spot this on the way up the beach. Looks to be maybe a cat with a ball. I like it. Kinda reminds me of Edward Gorey's style of drawing. Last find. At least, I kinda hope so. Tired now. Not sure if this is a lid, or a dish, or something else. I quite like it, and it's a bit of a mystery item to end on. And now, homewards. And roundup time. It felt really good to be back river walking, mudlarking, beach combing. I guess all three of those terms describe that outing. I didn't know that the first part of the stream was actually owned by the railway, and I might have chosen a different place had I known for my first outing after lockdown. The first person I talked to at the halfway point along the rail yard wasn't very happy about me being there, seemed to be thinking that I was in great danger going anywhere near the sheds, even though one of the sheds, at least, was open to the general public on that day. Of course, river walking does have dangers, but I am very careful, and the second staff member I talked to was absolutely fine with it when I explained what I was doing. I do like that little stream, and I'm looking forward to another good weather day when I can go and film a walk up the next section. In the fullness of time, I intend to film downstream as well, around about where it flows through the beautiful small town of Haworth, but perhaps not where it goes underneath the train station there. Finds-wise, I didn't expect to find all that much, and I was pleasantly surprised. There's some tools, the hatchet I will use as practice at restoring such things. I haven't decided yet whether or not to remove the current handle and fashion one out of wood. What do you reckon? Certainly making a wooden handle would add to a video if I was planning on making a video of the process, which I'm not sure about, this being my first restoration, and the likelihood is that it will end up a right mess. The beads on the probably necklace I thought were probably glass, but they're metal, which makes it more likely that it's quite a modern piece. The coin too is modern, 1997. I really don't find many very old coins in the rivers here. My oldest to date is probably no more than 120 years old. That's not to say they're not in there. Metal detectorists in the area do find a fair number of hammered coins, Roman coins, and even some Celtic staters. Not many of them could be in the rivers, but some may be, and I may one day get incredibly lucky. I am tempted to try and grow some miniature flowers in this thing, which is probably an insulator rather than a flower pot, but it really does look exactly like one. The possible fuel tank has either 1PRP or IPRP faintly embossed on it, though without knowing exactly what it is, finding out anything from that is difficult. In all likelihood, I'll end up scrapping it. Not so this partial fob watch. Don't know what I'll do with it yet. Perhaps something crafty with resin. This thing I'm intensely curious about. It's perhaps the largest, heaviest piece of brass I've found to date, and it's a big thing in a small house, which means that interesting though it is, I don't especially want to keep it in its current bulky form. So first comes identifying it, then comes finding a new home for it. Perhaps the rail yard would know, and maybe might like it in their museum, although it is in pretty rough shape, whatever it is. Hardly museum grade. A fair amount of scrap copper and lead, and of course plastic trash, rounds out the finds. And now the thank yous.
A huge thank you to everyone who's watched, liked, commented on and shared my videos. A further huge thank you to the kind people who've donated through Ko-fi and another for the kind people who've bought things off my Amazon wish lists. Off the list dedicated to tools and materials for future videos, the person with the YouTube profile name Jazz Deer kindly bought these acrylic paint marker pens, which I've had a play with and I love them. They're going to be so useful in quite a few projects, so thank you so much, Jazz Deer. I hope I pronounced that right. This silicon putty easy mold kit came without a packing note, so I don't know who it was that bought it. But whoever you are, thank you so much. This is going to be fun to use and the right choice for a few projects, and so much less messy than some of the other silicon moulding methods I've tried. The other wish list is not in furtherance of video making. In fact, it might just be a hindrance. I do have a tendency to get lost in good books sometimes, and that's often more appealing to me than editing. There are books that I'd like to read, and some more that I'd like to reread on that wish list, along with culinary treats that I rarely feel like I can afford myself. I had a strong suspicion of who it would be that would buy American chip spice off that wish list, and I was right. Thank you so much, Lexi. Lexi lives near the city of Hull, which is where the oddly named American chip spice originated, and I lived in Hull for four years and became very well acquainted with it. It's not the healthiest foodstuff available, but it's not awfully unhealthy either, and it is a condiment that I find delicious. Thanks again, Lexi. You might notice that you bought a pack of free. I couldn't wait to open it. Alas, the last thing here, these Beaches original dark chocolate fruit creams came without a packing note. Thank you very much whoever bought it. I don't eat chocolate often, but when I come back from a tiring mudlarking outing, chocolates like these is one of the things that I crave. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you'd like to, then any way you choose to show appreciation is very much appreciated. The options are likes, dislikes, comments, shares, donations through Ko-fi, or purchases from one or more of the two available Amazon wish lists. I hope that you're all keeping safe and well, looking after yourself and loved ones as best you can. Thank you all very much for watching, and for now, goodbye.